Good afternoon and welcome to Paul T's World. In this video, we're going to have a look at my front garden in June, glorious month. It's a month of long days. Sunrise is at a quarter to five, sunset a quarter to 10. It's nice and warm. There's a certain humidity after the drought of April and May, we're now getting plenty of rain. This is part one of a series of videos I will do around the garden. So you get a really good idea of all the plants in my English garden. This is the border we're going to look at today. It's got hydrangeas, Philadelphia, sedums, uh, some trees, rhododendrons. So I hope you enjoy the video. The Magnolia stellata has put on some extra growth now and is actually growing into this other rhododendron which is getting a little bit thin. So I think I need to be cutting some of this back and let's see if I can rejuvenate it. Perhaps coming in here and taking some of the old growth out. There's a gap here between the two rhododendrons and this is where there was a large pyrus which I've now moved. And so its place has been taken up with the hellebores. The hellebores self-seed everywhere. In fact, there's a couple of nice small hellebores. Perhaps I'll pop those up, give them away. The geraniums. Oh, and some bramble, so I'd better get in there and clear the bramble. I've put some ericaceous compost down, but not enough yet for the rhododendrons. This rhododendron flowers really nicely every other year. Perhaps if I gave it more water and more food, it would flower every year. The pyrus, which is a variegated pyrus, I think is a forest flame and it has lovely red leaves in the early spring. And I can see that the extra growth at the bottom and the sides here is non-variegated. Normally you'd cut those away, but in actual fact, uh, they tend to be a bit more vigorous and so it's giving it more body and I'm going to leave it. So we'll have non-variegated at the bottom and variegated as the main body of the plant. The Crimson King Maple now, as the season progresses in June, the leaves are not quite so pretty. Very pretty flower in spring because it flowers really nicely. The Contorted Hazel has put on a lot of extra growth. In fact, I cut it back the other day to allow the Pyrrhus to grow forward a little bit and also I've cut away some of the Crimson King but I'll do a little bit more as it's overhanging this contorted hazel a bit too much. I've got a little candy tuft down here not doing so well so I'll move that somewhere else. Oh, there's a little weed here and behind is the carrier japonica Oh, here's a little bit of the contorted hazel I was cutting away the other day. My father has got a carrier japonica and so I thought I would get one. The Fatinia red robin that is looking a little bit leggy and it really needs uh, to be cut back quite away, but I didn't want to just at the moment. So what I've done is I've taken off about ooh, two or three feet and you can just see here the new growth is starting. So there's going to be some lovely little red leaves in the next few months. Be very pretty. The sedum are growing up nicely. I actually cut some of these back, gave it a Chelsea chop so that it wouldn't be so leggy and fall over the lawn. I left some at the back. So that's the Sedum Spectabile. This is a slightly different uh, variety and this one too. I just don't know the name of those offhand. Here's the Azalea bed at the front. 
the Ericaceous spread, where I've got the deciduous azalea here. This one that didn't flower this year, but in actual fact, the growth is really nice. Look at that, lovely growth. So I'm anticipating a lot of flowers for next year. Just behind, I've got a self-seeded Cotoneaster horizontalis. So I'm going to leave that there because it's filling in a gap. The Pyrrhus are behind. Now it looks to me as though these are not going to open. The ones over there have opened and in fact they're over now. I've got these states so they don't collapse on me. Behind is that nice small lilac and the Deutzia that I put there a few years ago from another bed. It hasn't got enough room because a Deutzia can grow quite large and the flowers are really nice. In fact, there's some flowers just there now, isn't there? Just there. Another deciduous azalea. Those were flowering beautifully in April. There was an azalea here that I thought was in the wrong place. And so I moved it and I've put it here. It was just a few weeks ago and look at this. It's looking healthy. I find that when you replant ericaceous plants, they put on growth really well because of all the fresh compost they've been given. This little rhododendron flowered flowered nicely. Now you can take the flowers off if you like, the spent flowers. You just bend them back like that and there's the new growth right there. Oh look at this, lovely new growth. The Philadelphus flowered beautifully this year. Over now, petals falling. And so we're looking forward to the hydrangea. Got a blue tinge because of the acid soil. Although here it's pinker. I really like it when my hydrangeas have different colors. Potentilla has filled out. It's nice and green. I planted this viburnum. It's probably a viburnum tinus to fill in this gap here and it's growing up well. Flowers in the winter. And in front we have the Wygela. Wygela wine and roses recently moved that to this place and therefore it responded because of all the new nutrients. I've cut it back now so that it can put on some new growth. Look at this. And then the flowers will be on the new growth next year. The Forsythia. I cut this back to about three feet from the ground. And when you do that, it really looks as though it's never going to grow again. And look at it now. So that will flower yellow. One of the earliest flowering plants in the garden. Just in front is a flowering currant. Probably not in the right place, but I'm going to keep it under control so it fits in the gap. Candy tuft in the foreground. I've cut this back. Oh, there's some grass growing in it. It's a bit of a nuisance, the grass growing amongst the candy tuft, but you can often get to it down here by, there we are, and I've got, I've got the roots. Because it flops forward, so you can often lift it up and take grass out. So I've cut it back, you can cut it back as far as you like, and it will grow forward then for the following year with its white flowers the following spring. Deciduous azalea, this one flowered really nicely this year. 
another Catonia Aster Horizontalis, self-seeded, and another Candy Toft. Oh, and what's this, Aquilegia? All this is self-seeded. Oh, here we are. There's the Aquilegia. Oh, and there's its seeds. Some, ne <laughs> some nettles. I planted, don't ask me why, I planted a Buddleia there. It's white and it grows up through this tree and the butterflies really like it. I was given this white hydrangea. It was in a pot for a few years, started to outgrow the pot, so I've planted it. And it's looking good. Look at all this new growth, isn't that nice? I've actually spent a bit of time on it by giving it some food, ericaceous compost and plenty of water. Since our drought, we've had plenty of water, so I've used that it's on the hydrangeas and the azaleas. This is a big buddleia. And it's um, light, sort of purple, bluey purple. And this is the one the butterflies prefer. And the penstemons are starting to flower. As soon as the penstemons are finished flowering down here, just cut it off here and they send up more flower spikes through the summer. Really nice. I hope you enjoyed my video today, part one of the June tour of my garden. If you have, perhaps you might like to give it a like. And if you'd like to see more videos, consider subscribing. Hit the notification button and then you won't miss any of the videos. And I'll see you next time in Paul T's world. Bye.